We are on to activity three now in our second online lesson for indirect tax in our year 12 micro course. And in this one, we're going to be developing our knowledge of how indirect taxes work, not only by looking at tax revenue in a little bit more detail, and what we're going to do is split that down into uh, its component parts, which is what we call the incidence. So we're going to be looking at the incidence of tax on consumers and the incidence or burden of tax on producers. So we're going to start with some definitions, which are on the page there for you in front of you. And we have consumer incidence of tax and producer incidence of tax. It would be great if you could jot down those definitions for your notes. You can either do that on the piece of paper that you're using to work through this activity or on the accompanying download worksheet. So the consumer incidence of tax is the proportion of total tax revenue which is paid by the consumers. Similarly, the producer incidence of tax is the proportion of total tax revenue paid by producers. Now, it's easier to see what we mean by this by using diagrammatic analysis. So that's where we're going to head next. Now, on the screen there, we are going to look at the incidence of tax when we have relatively price elastic demand. So we have a fairly shallow demand curve. Now, just as a reminder, just remind yourself of the area on that diagram that would represent the tax revenue. Just have a little think. And hopefully you identified the area that I have now highlighted on the screen there for you, that blue rectangle. So that would be the total tax revenue as a result of this tax. What you might have noticed is that the price has only gone up from P1 to P2 whereas the tax per unit is the entire distance from P2 to P3. So this allows us to explore the impact on different agents here. So looking at the impact on consumers and the impact on producers. So because the price has only risen by a small proportion here of the overall tax per unit, the price has only gone up from P1 to P2, what we say is that that top rectangle is the proportion of the tax paid by consumers. And we call that the consumer incidence of tax or sometimes the burden of tax on consumers. Now, who pays the rest of the tax? Well, it's going to be the supplier or the producer. So that lower shaded rectangle, that green rectangle, is the producer incidence or the burden of tax on the producer. So the top box is the consumer incidence, the bottom box is the producer incidence, and both of those boxes combined is the total tax revenue. So that's how we do it with relatively elastic demand, and it's probably worth you just jotting down a few notes on that on your downloadable worksheet or just in your own notes. You can, of course, pause the video to do that. When you've done that, we're going to move on and think more uh, in more detail about inelastic demand. Okay, now a little summary box on the right hand side there that's really useful for you to be thinking about and jotting down relates to the elasticity. So in this case, the coefficient of price elasticity of demand is greater than one. In other words, PED is price elastic. Quantity demanded is very responsive to a change in price. In this case, most of the burden of that indirect tax is absorbed by the supplier. In other words, the producer incidence is a much greater proportion than the consumer incidence. So let's think now about what happens with relatively inelastic demand. And we have a little thinking task there on the screen for you. It's worth pausing the video while you take the time to think. Uh, and we'd like to suggest that you draw a demand and supply diagram, but this time draw your demand curve as being relatively price inelastic. Now adjust the diagram, adapt the diagram to show a uh, the imposition of an indirect tax. So you're going to shift the supply curve. And then we'd like to note down how the burden of tax revenue is shared between consumers and producers in this scenario. Which area represents consumer incidence? which area represents producer incidents. So pause the video, have a go at drawing, see what you think. Okay, so here is 
our um, pre-prepared answer for you. And in this case, you should be able to see that the change in price from P1 to P2 is much, much greater than it was when demand was price elastic. So in this case, the consumer incidence, that top box, is much larger than the producer incidence, which is the bottom shaded area. So when the coefficient of PED is less than one, in other words, when price elasticity of demand is inelastic, that means that quantity demanded um, is not responsive at all to a change in price, then actually what happens is that most of that indirect tax gets passed on to the final consumer. Occasionally in exams, you might face the situation that's now on the screen where you have numbers on your axes, uh, so specific prices and specific quantities. So here's a chance to just practice some of those all important quantitative skills. Just pause the video and have a go at the four questions on the left. This time you will probably need a calculator and you are calculating the area, not just identifying the area. When you're ready, restart the video and check your answers against mine. So let's take a look at some of the answers here. So first question, we were asking you to calculate the total value of tax revenue. Now it's the entire shaded area, um, well, not in this case, it's actually not all shaded, is it? But it's the difference between $15 and $9. That's the tax per unit. And then we're going to multiply that by 75, which is the total number of units sold after this tax has been imposed. And you should have got $450. The second one, the incidence of tax on the producer. This is the shaded area, that green shaded area at the bottom. And in this case, it's the $10, take away the $9, so actually just $1 multiplied by 75, which gives you $75. The remaining bit must be the incidence of tax on the consumer. So what you could have done is 450 take away 75, or in this case, as we've done it, 15 take away 10, which gives you five, then you multiply that by 75, which gives you $375. Don't forget those units, they're really important. Finally, just to build on a different quantitative skill, uh, you do need to know how to express ratios. It's one of the skills listed in the uh, appendix at the back of your specification. The ratio of producer incidence to consumer incidence. So in this case, it's 75 to 375, which is a, uh, a ratio of one to five if we simplify it. <laughs> 